that the most important endeavor that I have uh, as an African woman in the 21st century is to tell the story of my people, whether it be the story of my family, the story of our people historically, to tell our story. And one story that, that really stands out for me, as I used to listen to my father and my elders from a child and even into my young adulthood. Uh, one day I was looking at a picture of my um, grandmother. So my grandmother, her name is Charity. She is an ancestor now. And I remember looking at this photograph of grandmother and as well as having seen grandmother uh, from the time I was 16 until she, her passing when I was in my 30s, I used to listen to her stories. One of the things she said, Lord, our daddy worked us. And when she said work, she worked in the fields, in the fields of Alabama in the 1920s. 30s. She was born before the 20th century, born at the very end of the last decade of the 19th century. And a song comes to my mind, a song by Nina Simone, where she talks about four women. My skin is black. My arms are long. My hair is like wool. And my back is strong. Strong enough to take all the pain that's been inflicted again and again and again. What do they call me? My name is Aunt Sarah. Mon nom est Aunt Sarah. One of those women, I believe her name is Sophronia, and her, leg, her arms are very long. And that when I looked at my grandmother and I looked at the picture, I saw that her lower arm in proportion to her upper arm was extremely long. I had never seen that before. But I realized as a young adult, the reason for that. And the reason was my grandmother started working in the fields as a child. And one of the works she did in the early field work was clearing the land of tree stumps. And now you just imagine that constant movement as a child with your, your arms, especially your lower arm and that constant striking motion of hard labor, digging up stumps, tree stumps out of the earth to clear the land for planting. And I began to realize that the, the structure of her arms anatomically told a story of the hard labor, of the, the loss of childhood as a result of having to work on. They were plantations, and we're not talking slavery. We're talking to the time of Jim Crow, the time of state terrorism on the part of the, the local and state governments in the South and Alabama where you were bound politically, you couldn't vote, you had no voice. Uh, and if you did give voice, you put your life in jeopardy and that the lives of your family. And so economically, she was working as what they called a sharecropper, which mean, which, a, which is a feudal form of, of governance and re relevant to labor. Uh, her payment was, you get a share of the crop after the 16, 14 hour day of working from can't see to can't see. In other words, you got up in the morning when it was dark and you left the field 
when it was dark. And these were 14 hour, 16 hour days. Now imagine a child growing, body is developing, and you're doing this kind of labor. And as you progress in age, the labor becomes harder. And so the body adapts itself to this kind of work. And so therefore, grandmother had the long arms. Working from a child into her childbearing years. I remember one time she said that um, she had, they had been working and of course she breastfed her babies. And one of the things she had to be very careful about, she had to let her breast cool down after working in that hot sun in the fields before she nursed her baby. And this is this feudal system, this oppressive system that was supposedly in the, in our histor in the his history book states that slavery ended in the pro proclamation of 1863. But for my grandmother, for my family, and for all Africans in Alabama and throughout the South, that feudal oppressive system is really just an another manifestation of bondage, of slavery. So we tend to get lofty and think that in the 1920s and 1930s, when our people were on those plantations and they were the same plantations that were the plantations of the South during the period of enslavement from the early 1600s up until the uh, 18, late 1800s, in the 1900s, which we call the 20th century, it was still the same bondage, still the same oppression. They said we had wages, but we really didn't. You couldn't negotiate for any wages. It was basically the same feudal enslavement of our people, and it was oppressive, and her body reflected that oppression. Those long arms were the result of the kind of hard, brutal labor that she did from her childhood until her elder years. She worked all of her life, just until the point where she became an elder. And my father went and sent a member back south and got her and brought her to California. That is the kind of work she did. So we're looking at a period from the time, maybe six, seven, until she was in her 60s, 70s, working in the fields in the South under that oppression. From working in that hot sun, um, they wore hats and scarves to shield their faces. So her face wasn't sunburned, but her arms were. And I, I just have to share the story of courage. She was also, uh, as a hard worker, this woman was a master cook and she was a healer, which is an extension of what we brought from the motherland. We were master cooks in the motherland. She knew herbs. She healed from the land. And she would, uh, people in the community would bring sick children to her and she would heal them. And even as an elder, I would see her potions that she would make with different herbs. One of the herbs she used constantly was garlic. And uh, just a phenomenal woman, uh, really stern, really strict, um, never complained about the work she did. But she did say, Lord, we worked hard.